Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Uh, listen, I'm going to take just a few minutes here. I've been very deep in working on the book. Uh, don't even know a name for it as of yet, but it's going to be dealing here with Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Uh, many people know this to be the Antichrist, or at least the coming of the Antichrist. I'm not in an opposition with that, uh, but it is a lot deeper than what you could ever imagine. And so we're going to definitely uh, look at this very, very in depth. And we're going to be looking at the translation of this, especially in this book that I'm writing. Uh, in fact, I actually have the page open here where I do a suggestion for the translation. It's not just the word decree uh, that was translated as law, the word dot there that was translated as law, but it's also uh, where it talks about wearing out the saints. Uh, that's actually to mentally wear, wear, instead of saying wear out, I'll put mentally wearing down the saints. I italicize it in here so people know I explain all of that as I write this book here. But... Uh, and then we also have when it speak, when he shall speak words against the Most High, it's actually an authoritative type of words against the Most High. And I want you to really get a grasp on what this is about. And this book is definitely going to, it goes into all those areas there. I break it down. I share with you exactly what this is uh, referring to. Because this is the most profound understanding of revelation of one verse in Daniel's prophecy that will completely alter the course of your understanding of biblical revelation. It will actually uncover the very, um, the very sinister plots that have been done against the Christian church for nearly two centuries, uh, going a century and a half already now. Uh, it is a diabolical plan that the, pop, the Bible prophesied about, and unfortunately the church was asleep at the wheel, the pastors were asleep at the wheel, and they allowed this heresy to creep into the church there, and Daniel literally prophesied of it, but because nobody was paying attention, they made a few little alterations there to keep you from what, knowing what the truth really was. Now, I want to take you to the actual wording here in the Hebrew language as well. And he shall speak words against the Most High. Umalin. Okay. Umalin latzar aliyah. Okay. And they give you two different versions of how that's used, depending on, you know, where you might find this at. But it is uh, aliyah. Ya malal. Ya malal. Okay. That's where it's when it was, it's, it's speaking very authoritatively uh, against, against, the Most High, okay? Then he goes on to say, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. La Kadishi Aleonin, okay? Yabala ya super, okay? He wears out the saints, or literally he mentally wears down the saints of God. And who is it? It's this one that has the ability that he exalts himself above God. And people actually think to themselves, well, you know, I mean, that's really going to be a really wacko kind of guy to step on the scene to exalt himself above God and all that is called God. Well, it's been happening to you all along. And nobody's paying attention to it. I'm reminded of Jesus' words. You know what he said? You know, if the blind lead the blind, they both fall into the pit, right? And who is he talking about? The Pharisees. Do you know that according to Nehemiah Gordon, and maybe I can find the video on that. Let me just see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, it's not actually on his page. He's got only the Russian version on his page. Let's see, Nehemiah uh, Gordon and Pharisees. Okay. He does an amazing, uh, here it is right here, this one here. They actually uh, have dressed today as a modern. And this guy here, uh, Johnny Versity, God bless the man for actually carrying this. Let me see if I can find the right one in here. He, ha he hasn't broke down, so I'd have to see if it's in this one or not. I, I, uh, was... There's some traditions I Let's see, that's the introduction. 
Before we go into the first principle of Phariseeism, which is really the most foundational principle, I want to throw out a question to you. How many Torahs are there? Okay. So, all right, how many Torahs are there? One. One Torah. But if you're a Pharisee, there are two Torahs, and that's your most fundamental doctrine and belief, that when Moses went up to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, and by the, the way, revealed to him two separate and distinct... Nehemiah, when he does this message here, he actually explains to you that you cannot be an Orthodox Jew unless you can prove your descendant of the Pharisees. Okay, that's one of the important things that he brings out. Let me see what we get to this so on, part. Down to the Pharisees of the first century and even down to the rabbis of today. Now, the oral revelation which was transmitted from Moses to Joshua and so on and so on down to the Pharisees of the first century and even down to the rabbis of today. Now the concept of the oral law, so this is an ancient doctrine and really the most fundamental principle of Phariseeism is the theology or the doctrine of the two Torahs, the written Torah and the oral Torah. Now the Pharisees explain that the written Torah is sort of an outline, they often give the analogy of a, of a lecture, the notes that you're writing down right now, those notes, that's the written Torah. And the actual details, everything I'm saying, that's the oral Torah. And because of this, the Pharisees explain that the written Torah is completely incomprehensible without the oral Torah. The oral Torah completes the written Torah. Notice that. The written Torah is incomprehensible without the oral Torah, which was actually put into print later. Now, let me move forward. I want to find where he talks about... Writings. The first one of these to be written down was the Mishnah, which was written down around the year... He's just talking about the different, the year different ones, the Mishnah, the Jerusalem Talmud, and the Babylonian Talmud. Now, the Jerusalem Talmud was not written in Jerusalem. I just give it that nice name to make it look all fuzzy inside. Babylonian Talmud was actually written while Israel was in uh, Babylon. Okay, so then we have the Midrash, uh, several different books there. Let me see what else we get into. Epitomized by the saying in the Midrash, even if the Pharisees instruct you that right is left or left is right, you must obey them. In fact, when I was growing up, I was told that if uh, the rabbi is wrong, the sin is upon him. But you as the individual believer cannot take the uh, initiative to question the authority of the rabbi. If your rabbi tells you this, you must accept it and follow it. Well, I really had a problem with this when I was growing up with this, and I began to study the Torah, and I began to study the Talmud, the, the oral law, and I could see in the Torah that this was clearly the word of God. In the Torah we read, and Yehovah spoken to Moses saying, and we get to the prophets and we read, thus says Yehovah. It's clearly the word of God. And we get to the Talmud and we read, Rabbi Meir says this, but Rabbi Akiva disagrees and says that. And I went to my rabbis and I said, look, you know, one is the word of God, the other is clearly the words of men. Shouldn't we accept the word of God over the word of men, especially since they're not consistent with each other? And my rabbi said, no, absolutely not. Although these things are spoken as the words of this rabbi or that rabbi, the actual content of their words were revealed to Moses on Mount Sinai. And I wasn't convinced, and I, and I came back and I said, look, the way the rabbis are interpreting scripture in the oral law, the way they're interpreting the written scripture, uh, is, is just not consistent with what it says in scripture. And I can, I can read, and I can see that that's not what it says. Okay, now let's continue on. One day, one of my rabbis sat down and he said, enough of questioning the authority of the rabbis, Nehemiah. You must accept their authority. And he began to tell me a very famous story, the story of Rabbi Eliezer, which is a foundational story in rabbinical theology. Yes. And the story of Rabbi Eliezer, it's told in the Babylonian Talmud, and it goes as follows. Rabbi Eliezer was the greatest of the... Well, we won't go into the whole detail of that. I'm trying to find where he actually shares the scripture of where they believe that they have authority on earth. Okay, now let me see. With Rabbi Eliezer, in all matters, the law agrees with him. And by the way, that's an actual recording that was made at the time. <laughs> They've heard this voice calling out from heaven, saying, Rabbi Eliezer's right, why are you arguing with him? And they hear this and they're very impressed. And they turn to Rabbi Eliezer and they say, scriptural evidence and mir three miracles and God calling down from us from heaven telling us you're right and they turn to him and say we're very impressed but sorry we don't listen to heaven and as my here rabbi was telling me this story he opened up actually me to the book of Deuteronomy here it is to Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 12 and there it actually says concerning the Torah that the Torah is not in heaven it is not in heaven and this is the words that the rabbis said to Rabbi Eliezer and they explained to him that God has no say in interpreting scripture because the Torah is not in heaven. 
The Torah is here on earth and the rabbis are the ones who have exclusive authority to interpret scripture. God has no say in it. And my rabbi turned to me as he was telling me the story. and God has no say in it. All right, let me back it up. So you hear what he says again. Miracles and God calling down from us from heaven telling us you're right. And they turn to him and say, we're very impressed, but sorry, we don't listen to heaven. And as my rabbi was telling me the story, he opened up actually me to the book of Deuteronomy, to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 12, and there it actually says concerning the Torah that the Torah is not in heaven. It is not in heaven. And this is the words that the rabbis said to Rabbi Eliezer, and they explained to him that God has no say in interpreting scripture because the Torah is not in heaven. The Torah is here on earth, and the rabbis are the ones who have exclusive authority to interpret scripture. God has no say in it. And my rabbi turned to me as he was telling me the story, and he said, You see, Nehemiah, God himself can't question the interpretation of the rabbis. So who are you to question their interpretation? And as I was hearing this, I, I, I was in shock. And I have to tell you, for years I struggled with the oral law. Uh, it was very difficult for me because uh, my father was a rabbi, and many of my ancestors... Okay. Now you see... The rabbis, Deuteronomy, and well, let's just let's just go to Deuteronomy real quick here. Deuteronomy, up, uh, oh, sorry. Deuteronomy thirty and twelve, because this is exactly where they have taken the authority of God Almighty. Basically, as they would put it, they put God in His place. God has no say so here on this earth. See, and this is the one where they take it from right here. I even have a highlight. For this is the commandment which I command you this day. It is not too hard for you, neither is it too far. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who shall I go uh, up for us to heaven and bring it unto us and make us to hear it, that we may, we may do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say. Yeah, okay, now you can read the whole context of everything here. God has, has nothing to do with the fact that God does not have authority over everything that's on this earth. But the Pharisees have taken the authority from God. No wonder why John says in his, uh, in his writings, I think it's 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, one of those there, there are many antichrists already. It, it, it will end up with one but it starts off in a plural. And it comes all the way down. So when we look at Daniel chapter 7, the first thing that he does, he shall speak words against the Most High. Literally, the word in there used there, the way they use it, is with authority. He speaks with authority against the Most High. And this is what the rabbis believe. that they have authority over God himself on this earth. But it doesn't stop with there. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Wear out the saints of the Most High, right? In the book that I'm writing right now, I actually translated it the way I believe it should be translated. And this is the way I saw it. And he shall speak authoritative words against the Most High. And he shall mentally wear down the saints of the Most High, and he shall think to change the times and the decree. Now, the mentally wearing down the saints, if, if truly these rabbinical authorities have taken over, and, if, and listen, the only place we can find anywhere on this planet right now is through rabbinic Judaism, and not, by the way, I don't believe this with this, what was it? Do I still have the video up? Let me just show you something here. No, I don't have it up there, I don't think. Nope, I don't. Sorry. Thought I did. Would have loved to have had that video still up. Anyway, I'll find it for you later, right? But that, that wonderful rabbi that was speaking 20,000 Jews against Zionism. Now, that's real Judaism. That's the way Judaism should be. Because why? These authoritative rabbis that say that they have authority over God on earth and they're not, they make no bones about it. That's where Daniel said 
he will speak words, authoritative words against the Most High. Then it says he will mentally wear down the saints. How does he mentally wear them down? Well, he's been doing it now since about 1908 by a man by the name of Cyrus Schofield. I just think it's funny how this Schofield got his first name, Cyrus. As if he is going to be the one to lay out a decree for the coming of the temple of God. Artaxerxes actually give the decree. We know this from the book of Ezra. Then you have Cyrus and Darius. They all, each one contributed to making sure that Israel would return to their homeland and rebuild the temple and to rebuild Jerusalem. It was a decree that was given. But Daniel said he would also wear down the saints mentally. What does that mean? To begin to break you from what... What does the scripture say? Just come to me. You left your first love. Written in Revelation. Thou hast left thy first love. Repent. And come back to Christ. Because Schofield, who with this marvelous book, it seemed marvelous to everyone, Cyrus Ingerson Schofield, born in 1843, died in 1921, was a significant American theologian, writer, and pastor who is best known for his Schofield reference Bible. He was actually Jewish. That convert was a little bit kind of shady. Do you know the guy was actually convicted for forgery and fraud? We'll go into all that in the book. You can find out a little bit more about the guy, right? On the most influential theological works of the 20th century, it is he popularized dispensationalism, which uses the literal, grammatical, and historical system of biblical interpretation and therefore separates Israel and the church because of his hermeneutic. Schofield saw in God's word a resurrection for the nation of Israel long before there was any hope of a modern Jewish state. Are you really serious? How gullible would somebody even believe that nonsense? The thing is, though, his work is what would begin to mentally break you down. I fell for it as well. I wrote my first book, Israel, Are They Still God's People, greatly to the credit of Schofield's notes. I had the best architect for laying out nothing but lies. But the, all truth has, all, I mean, all lies have some foundation of truth. You know, there's a lot more about how this came about. But let me just show you something. This is the first lie, long before the modern Jewish state ever come into mind, right? Well, Theodore Herzl. This is right here on Wikipedia, which everybody hates. But anyway, it does give some factual information. As an organized nationalist movement, Zionism is generally considered to have been founded by Theodore Herzl in 1897. 13 years before Schofield comes out with his ideology. And slowly but surely, working, with, of course, he worked with John Darby. And then the Moody Bible Institute picked up his Schofield reference Bible. And the whole thing was a plan and a plot to change the minds of Christians. They truly were, as I translate it more accurately, he shall mentally wear down the saints. When you look at it up, that, that's actually in Schofield. It's of, of, of a mental nature to wear out the saints was mentally wearing them out. Slowly but surely, breaking you. As Jesus said in uh, revelation what happened you left your first love he began to break you down he kept breaking you down so what he didn't say he's going to kill them he just said he's going to break them down mentally 
And then he shall think to change the times and the decree. If we go back over here and we look at it, here it is right here. La Hashin Shin Zamin, the the times, and it is plural, times, plural. Oh actually it's old uh Hebrew there using the noon instead of a mem. Ve, which is an, that word right there, ve dot. Did you know dot is actually a Persian word? If you remember Daniel, I think it was Chuck Nessler that made this very famous. The first part of Daniel is written all in Arabic. The second half was written in Hebrew. And it's literally, what do we have? We got on chapters here. Let me go back and look real quick. I forget the number of chapters. 12 chapters. I don't know if it's right in the middle or whatever. But nonetheless, that word right there is a Persian word. Oddly enough, as I was doing my research, the one thing, and I actually went into this, I think in my second book, I kind of hinted around about this on Artaxerxes, that Ezra was actually married to Artaxerxes I. Not to Xerxes himself, but to Artaxerxes. And there are a couple of scholars that have actually agreed, even though it is not mainstream thinking there, they do agree that that is a very good possibility because one scholar actually argues that it would have been one of the reasons why the Jews found such favor in the sight of a Persian king to be allowed to go home and restore Jerusalem and their temple would have been if it was actually Esther that was married to him. So the decree goes forth to rebuild and to store, restore Jerusalem. But this guy, this Antichrist, first will speak words against the Most High. He will then wear out the saints. I believe it comes in, 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 in stages, in time. And then once he has you wore down, it's easy for you to believe that the decree is for today not for 2,000 years ago, or in that case, 2,500 years ago, when the temple was actually being rebuilt again. It was really not meaning during that time, was it? Because this guy wants to change, not the Torah. He's not coming to change the Torah, as people believe it's the Catholic Pope, because he wants to make Sunday the Sabbath instead of Saturday. It has nothing to do with that. You've been duped into this. You've been wore down to believe a lie so that no one would ever know this Antichrist. And here's what's fascinating, right? Jesus says in the Hebrew Matthew, let me just find that for you. Matthew, I think it's chapter 5, let's see, no, chapter 24 in verse 15, I believe, is where it's at. Let me just blow this up so we can see it. Yep, it is verse 15, chapter 24. And this is translated correctly. And this gospel, that is Evangelii, will be preached in all the earth for a witness concerning me. To all nations, then the end will come. This is the Antichristos, he says in Greek. And this is the abomination which desolates, which was spoken of by Daniel. As standing in the holy place, let the one who reads understand. The Antichrist comes to destroy. Standing in the holy place fooling the people, getting them to believe that in the modern days here that Israel was going to become a nation once again and that they were going to rebuild their temple. He wore you down to believe this so that he could change that time, the time of when it should have been built, and it was, and the decree that Artaxerxes gave and to give it to a modern decree 
So in other words, meaning that, well, God meant for the temple to be built today. And they rewrote all of your theology. The early church never believed these things. They didn't believe it at all. But here we are. I'm Stephen Benoon. I can't wait to get this book finished. I'm deep into it right now. And uh, hopefully I'll have it done here a month or so. I've been working on it for quite some time, but I'm really trying to get it out now because more than ever, I mean, how can you say that this is the people of God when they just murder anybody and everybody in their path? People say, well, they killed the Jews. They killed them on October the 7th. Hamas came in and did that. Hamas had an open invitation. As that former Israeli American soldier said to you, you don't come in our, you don't come into Israel and breach the fence that like that. Not without it being an inside job. There's no way possible. Rabbi Mizrahi, he told you also it was an inside job. I did a whole video on it with all kinds of witnesses about that. YouTube made me take it down. But those witnesses still keep coming forth. But Israel is on a campaign of slaughter. You know, the scripture says, you know, when you read that in Genesis, he that blesses Israel will be blessed. He's, no, it doesn't say that. God said to Abraham, whoever blesses you, singular, will be blessed. And whoever curses you, singular, will be cursed. He doesn't say anything about Whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. No, he didn't say that. The covenant, though, was because to protect the promised seed, which was Jesus Christ. He also says there, and oddly enough, that's the very one that always pops up for me when you turn on my scripture here. He says, and I will bless them that bless you. you now, the plural is them. He blesses them that blesses you, singular, right there. Meburucha. Didn't say Bruchem. If it was to his people, it would have had to say Bruchem. Those who bless you, you all, your whole family. Didn't say that. And him that curses you, U Mekalacha, again, you singular, I'll curse any of those people that will curse you. And then he says here. And in you, again, in you, ne baruchu becha, he'll be a blessing to them, in him, in Abraham, to all mishpachot, all the families of the earth, of Adam. So if Abraham through him, through his seed, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And then you know that Jesus Christ was that promised seed. And then you know now that all the families of the earth are to be blessed. That includes Palestinians, Lebanese, Syrians, Americans, Chinese, Russians, Indians, Hindus. I found three results in Mandarin Chinese for American. Sorry. Phone has to listen in on How do you get this thing to shut up? Anyway, sorry about that. The point is, all families of the earth are to be blessed through Jesus Christ. He was that promised seed, nobody else. And so when you are standing with Netanyahu in his murderous cabinet, rather than trying to help them to recognize that Jesus Christ was truly the Son of God, you have done the greatest disservice to Israel you could have ever done. When you stopped sharing the gospel, you did the greatest disservice. You have cursed them because you didn't bring the gospel to them. When you sit there and condone the death of the Palestinians, you have cursed God's 
chosen children that he said that he would bless through through Abraham and through his, that would be through his promised seed Jesus Christ. Don't fall under that curse because it will backfire. Repent while there is time to repent. If this is a blessing in any way and you want to support the work we do, please do. All right? IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can support our work. Right now our video section is down on our channel there. I'll have to get with some folks. Oh, they already got it back up. I'm thankful they got that back up. So, uh, But you can support us there online. Uh, also, your EMP shield there, you, you got right there, right on our website. You can click on there. You can save by doing the INL50. Life wave. We're going to go into that a little bit deeper with you guys here, not so for, from long, too much longer from now. Anyway, tonight at 8 p.m., about 15 minutes. So it'll be this video will be not out yet, but anytime, any Sunday, www.x39hub.hub.com. Always Sundays at 8 p.m. Love to have you talk to you and share the wonderful things that this has done for so many people. I mean, absolutely. In fact, I finally figured out the right place to wear it. I was like a half inch off. Oh my gosh, through the roof results. God bless you. Have a great night.